Everybody utilizes, but not everybody optimizes. If you're a new agent watching, you have a huge opportunity. Don't give up. Just do the right thing. Make a good brand for yourself. Get good photos of yourself. Get a website. Get a video. Use all these tools that are available to you. You're going to stand out. And a lot of the, the old generation, they're not doing much at all. They're kind of relying on their name now. They've built their reputation in the 80s, 90s, right, right. when that wasn't necessary. They already have their contact book. They're famous, so to speak. Right. And I think some of these people that are relying on the past to support them, they eventually kind of get weeded out. Welcome to the 3D Media Live podcast. I am Akiva. And I'm Dimitri. And we're happy to be here. How you doing? I'm doing excellent. How about yourself? I'm doing good, bro. Listen, episode four. Episode four. Hey, we keeping it moving. Time flies by. We keeping it moving, man. It's it's good. You know, it's it's been it's been awesome just to be able to look back on the past couple episodes to see what we've been talking about, to see to hear hear the discussions and and you know, I, I'm always a fan of uh I, I i love being a part of the beginning of something right it's nothing like that you know just because you you get a chance to just see the whole development process to see the growth you know it's uh it, it's awesome and it's evolving little by little every time that's right that's right and you know and, and also too just we, we appreciate the the responses thank you for the, the the support thank you for watching thank you for tuning in and again just like we said in the last episodes if you have some ideas, some topics that you would like for us to chat about, please drop it in the comments, let us know, and we'd be happy to make an episode about it. Yep. So what are we covering today? You know, I think it'd be good to talk a little bit about real estate, you know, and how we've been able to tap into that market. What are some of the trends? What is real, real estate marketing? You know, we live in a digital age now. We want to let's so let's let's talk about some of those things. Let's talk about how we've been able to really create, um, you know, cre create uh, the, these these beautiful video productions for you know to be able to help our clients and pictures. Let's talk about you know drones, all those different things. I think I think that'll be cool. Um, that's a great topic. I think we're very strong on this topic and um, we do pretty much everything around real estate media. So um, I guess we can just jump in. Uh, I want to say first that the people that understand the need for this yeah. are the ones that are ahead of everybody else. And I'm, I'm specifically referring to real estate agents. Uh, the real estate agents that value quality real estate media, they're the ones that are, that are killing it. Hmm. There's so many agents out there today still trying to save money and take phone pictures or just cutting corners. <laughs> and it's absolutely ridiculous. And like oh, 2023, man. we're already almost 2024. Yeah. And um, it just, it's a missed opportunity for them. And I think the reason why they do it, I kind of understand it, you know, like the market is so tight right now, there's lack of inventory. I remember from probably the beginning of the pandemic, the moment a listing hits the market, there's like a lot of people bidding on that property right away. Yeah. And uh, I guess the thought process is, hey, it's going to sell no matter what. Why even waste any money on real estate media production where I can just pocket the money from the commission and call it a day? Yeah. But that's such a big disservice to the customer. Mm -hmm. And that is a big disservice to themselves. They don't even realize it. And I'll tell you why. If you are not thinking ahead of this deal, mm -hmm then you're not really thinking at all. Okay. Because once you're gonna finish this transaction, you're supposed to be thinking about the next one already. Mm -hmm. That That's just if you're selfish. If you're selfish, you have to spend money now because the next customer will see what you did and they they might not hire you if you're cutting corners. If, you're, yeah. if they see the listing that you did was a phone picture <laughs> I mean, it's it's pretty ridiculous. Let me just put it this way. All right, because I, I but I, after you get done, I want to. I got we got to talk about these phone pictures too. So let go ahead and sure. start there because I want to talk about it. So look at this. The house is gonna sell no matter what. Yeah. Yes, I agree with that a hundred percent. But let me ask, and I think just about any person in the world can answer this. And I'd love to hear responses in the comments. Maybe we should do a poll. I would love to see a poll. What do you think the house is gonna sell for more money? or less if it has professional pictures. 
What do you think? It's, if it has professional pictures, it's going to sell more. It's going to sell for more. Now, if it has also a video that engages with the audience, even more. And if it has a virtual tour and you can explore the place and bid from far away, even more. So, if you're just <laughs> if your goal is to sell the house, right, right, you're failing because that's not the objective. Anybody can sell a house. Yeah. To be honest, like, what's the point of being a real realtor today? If if all you're thinking, I'm just going to sell the house, sell the house for the maximum value possible. Mm. And if you're going to get an extra offer for your seller, that means you just got them probably at least five to ten thousand dollars extra. Mm. And even your commission, if you're on working on like even the most basic one percent commission, you just made an extra hundred bucks. Yeah. And half the time it's like these services, they start so cheap. They're like 300 bucks for a photo shoot, 200 bucks for a photo shoot, whatever it may be, whoever you work with, most of the time, it, it is definitely worth the price of admission. Yeah. And don't even think about yourself. Think of the seller, like I'm saying, give them like the service they deserve. They yeah. trusted you, they picked you, so give them the best possible selling price. Yeah. And now let's go back to being selfish. Be selfish because the next time you're going to go to the next guy, to the next listing presentation appointment and say, hey, I did A, B, C, D. I got to sell the house for more money. Yeah. They're going to hire you more likely than not because people see the value in these services. You don't have to be a scientist. You don't have to be even just an average person knows. Yeah. Getting these basic things will make a difference. So why do people settle? Like why why do they just settle for just a phone picture or how come they're not willing to I guess go I don't even want to call it an extra mile because it's not even it's not even a mile it's simple. <laughs> you know what I mean it's very simple you know and it's and just working here at three D Media I've learned that it's not even that expensive it's not even a it's not right because you can't even you can't even look at it as a cost like it's a you know th this it, it's an investment you know like you're gonna get. A, a maximum return just like you said right. right you're gonna you're gonna sell the house for maximum profit right so so back to my question why do people settle i, I mean I, i'm gonna probably give people benefit of the doubt i'm not gonna say it's pure greed although i'm sure it's, you're very kind <laughs> I'm, I'm sure there that's a big factor for a yeah, lot of yeah, people yeah, yeah. but i'm gonna give them benefit of the doubt and just say it's fear people fear okay. that oh the, they work so hard to get this listing and they really want to like make as much money now because they're uncertain what's going to happen tomorrow. But that mentality, hmm. it's like, it, it basically self-fulfilling prophecy. If you're fearing that you're not going to get another deal tomorrow, then you're definitely not going to get another deal tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. If you're thinking now, hey, I'm going to invest the profits, pro proceeds to better my customer and possibly improve my chance of getting a next listing, then you're a winner. And again, it's not like major investment. Most of the time, realtors, especially in California, they're like, what's the average price today in California? I don't know, 1.2 million, 1.3 million. Yeah. If you're average realtor and you've gotten, let's say, three, uh, let's say 3% is the what you're supposed to get, 3% commission. So 3% on $1.2 million house, it's $36,000 commission. 36,000. Yeah, wow. I think you should spend a little bit. You should probably yeah. spend a thousand or two yeah. on getting proper media content in today's digital world mm. because first impression is everything if you get good photos there will be more people coming to the listing if you get a nice video that means that person that saw the property online is going to come in with positive emotions because music is what drives a good video that we are really really picky about picking the right songs yeah and because songs, as you know, it's like all emotions. Yeah. It's a language of the soul. Yep. So if you pick the right song that's just like perfect for the house, then the person falls in love with it. It's like an advertisement, commercial for the thing you're selling. A million dollar house deserves a commercial. Yeah. And then you have a virtual tour that allows you to browse the house from pretty much anywhere in the world. And we know today after the pandemic, there's so many more people relocating constantly and they're ready to make an offer from outside. Yeah. And there's no other way to do it. And forget even from outside. Like I was looking to move uh, a couple of years ago. I don't have time to go looking at every property that's, in person. That's a fact. 
you know what I do? I go to Zillow. I look up which homes have 3D tours. Yeah. Or I go to the, like, uh, my agent would send me MLS listings. for thing. First thing I check, does it have a 3D listing? If it does, if it has a 3D tour, that's the first one I'm going to check. Because I know I'm going to save time. I can just browse it really quickly at the convenience of my house or at work, whatever it is. Whatever it is. Yep. Send it to my wife. If we both like it, then we go in person and check it out. Got it. So, so I, I want to talk about a lot of these different services, virtual tours and uh, all these different things. But like, w let's go back to like video. Let's start the video and photos. What is the, I guess, the average cost to be able to have something like that for your listing? That's a great question and it's a very difficult answer. Okay. Because let's say there's so many, there's thousands of photographers around the United States. Yep. Our mission has been to bring the maximum value at the lowest cost possible. Here's what the issue is. The, with each photographer, they start off, their, their skill set grows, right? Okay. So they start off desperate to get the work and they'll be bidding super low. So whenever you're looking for a photographer and somebody's giving you a really low price, there's always a catch. More likely than not that somebody that has a free schedule why he has a free schedule because he's new if he's known and he's doing good work he's not gonna have a free schedule yeah so he's desperately bidding for work and he's giving you the lowest price possible that might be all right for like a garbage listing that you're selling something like you know nobody wants you want to save money okay but i would never recommend doing that because you're those pictures will represent who you are okay because they don't know the photographer they know the guy that hired the photographer mm -hmm. then you have the really experienced, the top of the line photographers. Guess what happens to them? Their schedule starts to shrink, 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 shrink. Supply and demand, everybody wants them. Because they're so busy, yeah. They don't have the time, so what do they need to do? They raise the price. Mm -hmm. So they're on the other end of the extreme. They'll be charging like, so let's say on the bottom end, I don't think anyone's gonna do less than 100, 150 for a photo shoot, and that's like the beginner, beginner. Okay. Um, and then on the top end for this like similar size, let's say 1500 square feet, you're going to have somebody that's going to be charging maybe a thousand dollars. I've seen sometimes even more, maybe upwards of 1500, even 2000. Hmm. Those are like the absolute, absolute best aces in the industry. Um, and there's very little in between because once a person gets very successful, then everybody flocks to him and then he gets really busy. Yeah. If he's still charging the same amount, more more likely than not, you're not going to be able to book him because he's going to be really busy. Hmm. So it tends to be like either somebody really low or somebody on the high end. Then you have companies like our, our own that try to standardize the service and they try to bring the pricing like somewhere in the middle okay. and they hire photographers. But the problem is not all companies are created equal. Um, mm. A lot of our competitors, they're cutting corners. They go straight to somebody that's like um, straight out of photography school, has no experience. They pay them very little and they charge a lot and they get mediocre results. Mm. Uh, we try to get photographers. Well, actually, photographers come to, to us now. I don't even have to look for them. They email us. I just saw an email yesterday from an amazing guy. He moved from another state. He's in LA and he's uh, once worked really top quality. Yeah. And he knows with us, he's going to be busy and we, he doesn't have to worry about scheduling. He doesn't worry about customer service. He doesn't have to worry about with anything. He can focus on what he does best is shooting. Uh, the problem is with creative people. They're not very organized. Hmm. They're not very business uh, oriented. Okay. Um, and it's very difficult for them to have some kind of a structure. They tend to underbook. They tend to be like just scattered all over the place. They don't have systems. So our job is to make the best environment possible for top end photographers and top end editors to come together and collaborate with us to deliver the best product for the customer. Gotcha. So we try to bring the quality, let's say 95 to 99% of the best guy out there in the industry mm -hmm. at the price, maybe 20, 30% higher of the lowest guy. Okay. And that comes with economies of scale. Got it. The more orders we can do, the bigger we get, the, all of our costs start to drop and we bring that saving to our customer. Got it. So now going back to your question, what is the average price? 
So it is all over the place. But if I had to guess about, say, 300 bucks to about 400 okay, that will get you a really nice photo shoot. If you're working with a company like our, our own, there's not too many of them in the country. There's maybe one or two that are mm. really, really good quality for that price. In the country? Yeah, in the country. Wow. There may be some like regional ones that are doing decent job, but they'll always have some kind of something lacking. They might only be good at photos, nothing okay, else. I see. They might be like very, very narrow in their geography. The, like anything else will be travel fees. They, will, they might lack the ability to have a website creation or virtual tours, or they might not be able to have good drone pilots or typically like uh, the, I think the hardest thing is to get really professional videos. Ah, yeah. That's probably the hardest thing. I think there's a lot of good photographers out there, but the videos, that's really tough to get. That's my favorite. I love mm. going on the Zillows and going, looking at different listings. And I, I personally tend to just kind of skip over the pictures. I like the video because it just gives me just a better view of the whole situation. Right. I think most people do. And it's also like nice and quick and you yeah. get to relax and there's music and it's in yeah. somewhat kind of interactive. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think, um, you know, less, since we're talking about the video, you, you mentioned earlier about the virtual tours, you right. know, like, um, I, I see quite a bit of people, uh, you know, having the virtual tours, but I feel like, I feel like it's still not, uh, it's not that popular, uh, you know, I guess still like why, how come people aren't really using this particular feature? Huge mistake. Uh, um, we actually started with virtual tours and I saw the benefit of the technology, like from the very beginning, Yeah. because it is so different. Uh, there's a, so much potential in it. Um, I think the reason why people are still, it's not, uh, I think after pandemic, first of all, the adaptation dramatically changed. Before I remember pitching it to people, they just didn't get it. And the, the, I think the issue is that a lot of the real estate agents, the ones that are at least successful, uh, it takes a lot of time to succeed in the industry. Mm -hmm. And they tend to be on the older side. Meaning like they the would rather have the- boomer generation or the older side. Okay. And they, they're not as, uh, used, like they're not friendly with technology. And they're failing the point is they think they're the customer. They're not the customer. The, the buyers are typically younger families now. The ones that are one of first time home buyers mm -hmm. or somebody else. They're most of the time going to be very adaptive to this technology. They'll, they'll pick it up on the first go. Yeah. If you can get it, doesn't mean that they can't. Mm -hmm. So are, are people still thinking that the physical tours are better? I've heard all the type of arguments. Let's go through some of them. Yeah. I've heard an argument that, oh, um, if somebody has a digital tour, they're less likely uh, th they're, they're less likely to tour in person. And that's a fallacy. That's not true. It's been proven by data. That's not actually true. Um, there's data that's been published by Matterport. Great data. If you, if you get a chance, check it out on the website. I don't have it right in front of me. Maybe I should, I should pull it up, but... Um, if I remember correctly, the statistics are that it's 25%. Let me pull it up. I don't want to make stuff up. 15% more time on, on site after they've seen a virtual tour. Ah. So it's, it's, you know, it's speaking to the contrary of the main objection that people make. Mm -hmm. They're going to spend less time in person. No, 15% more time. 15% is pretty significant. Significant. Yeah. And there is a reason logically think about this. If a person checked it out online, that means he's more committed to go actually spend more time and, and see if all those things that he saw online are true or not. Ah, good point. You weed out all the people that are n like not very interested in, in, in your property and you're saving a lot of time for yourself because yeah. there's a lot of people that are just tire kickers. They'll come and, oh, no, I didn't like this, the color of this door. You eliminate all of those right from the get-go. And true. the ones that come, they're already, they know what they want. Yeah, that that's real true because I feel like you mentioned time, like saving time. Like it is save. It can save so much time because I don't have to get in in my car and to drive to a listing, and then and then I end up getting there. It's not what I like, right? Rather, right. I can just check it out first at the house, and then go into the rooms, go into the air, different areas, and 
Yeah, so that makes a lot of sense. Saves them for the agent showing the house. Yeah. He's showing it to more qualified buyers. That's yeah, that's that's the part. Yeah. You're gonna you the agent will probably get a lot more, you know, qualified in, qualified people. people, people that are really, really truly interested. Because if right. I'm not if not in, if I'm not interested, I'm not gonna call. Exactly. Yeah, that's a good point. Um seventy four percent of agents using Matterport win more listings. How many? Seventy four percent. Seventy four. So one uh three out of four people that utilized virtual tours will get more jobs. Wow. That's a huge, and that's huge and increase. that's from Matterport statistics. Yeah, yeah. I don't know Sheesh. the exact numbers. How many people they serve it to get those numbers? But um, I'm I'm gonna give them benefit of the doubt. It's a pretty big company. I don't yeah. think they're just making up stuff. Right, right. Then we have 95 percent more likely to get a phone call about a home with a 3D tour. Hmm. So if you made a 3D tour for a house, it almost doubles your chances of getting a phone call for it. Wow. So if you would have thought, oh, I'm going to get less people because I'm going to eliminate all the people that are not interested. Yeah. You do eliminate people that are not interested, but you also attract way more people that could be interested. Why? Because I was one of those people that wouldn't simply even entertain a house unless it has a vir virtual tour. Yeah. I want to check out homes that I can check first online before I go to them in the in the person so like it's a huge significant advantage over any homes that don't have virtual tours mm. i'll tell you another secret and uh that's like a little no secret within the industry that the homes that have virtual tours mm -hmm. will get more uh exposure online on websites like zillow and redfin ah. after the pandemic especially why because they want to prioritize those homes because they know themselves also based on statistics like these that there will be greater engagement. It's like a SEO, you know, mm -hmm. search engines will try to present stuff that is more relevant to you. Yeah. And to you, it's something more relevant that has all these tools to help you engage with it. So they want to keep you on the website for as long as possible, mm -hmm. right? So if you have a house that has a virtual tour, they'll put it like on their map where you're searching is going to say 3D tour. Those will get higher clicks. I think Zillow also puts the in newsletters the homes with virtual tours higher in the search results. All these basically ways to increase the quantity of people viewing the home. So not only are you giving more tools for your customer to interact with the property, you're also exposing it to more people. It's like paying for ads without paying for ads. Yeah, yeah. It's multiple uses. So why are people still not using it it's really mind-blowing to me yeah. <laughs> because if i was an agent and sometimes i think i should just become an agent and just i don't know kill it <laughs> out in the marketplace because it's pretty simple yeah. get the stuff yeah. if you're an agent listening get the stuff get don't the stuff. save the money trust me i'm not doing this i'm not saying this to you because i'm gonna make you could hire somebody else in the in the country it's not about you hiring us I'm giving you quality advice. Get a virtual tour, get photos, get videos. Let's say you spent a thousand or two thousand dollars tops. You're gonna get more value for your home uh, seller. The, the house is gonna sell for more money. You can possibly double end on the deal because I've heard this many times before where our customers that do go all the way and get all these packages, they'll come to us and say, I doubled down on the deal. Because hmm. the buyer of the house comes comes in there, he's talking to the to the agents like, "Wow, you did such an amazing job for this house. I loved everything, all the photos you did, all this, this, and that." I before I buy this house, I need to sell my house. Can you help me now sell my house? Yeah, because you're doing such a great job. Right, right, right. So now he gets to sell a house from the buyer. He gets the buyer and he helps the seller. So it's like he won an extra listing just Boom. like that. There we go. Yeah. You know, one of my favorite things when I'm looking at the videos, it just blows me away, are, are the drone shots. The drone shots are like, whoa, like especially the ones that's way high up. And you can just see like the whole the whole city, you know, then it, it flies over the waters and on top of the homes. It's crazy. Like, can you discuss the role of drones in real estate photography and video and videography? And how has this technology changed the way properties are showcased? Great question. I think drones are by far probably, I think, the most uh, used now the, out of all the other things. Yep. 
obviously photos everybody has to get photos that's Gotta the first thing yeah. but out of all the other services i see more people adding drone than any other service mm -hmm. out there and i think it's just obvious to people that with the development of drone technology showcasing the area is so easy now because before if you're an old school agent you probably remember if you're selling some luxury house you have to hire a helicopter and fly around and <laughs> yeah. show stuff. That would be thousands of dollars. Right, right. Now you pay a couple of hundred dollars to a person and please, please, please hire somebody with a license and insurance. Mm. Uh, get somebody to fly their drone, take some photos, and now you all of a sudden see the whole area. Like when, when you live in Southern California, like we do, um, there are parks everywhere, yeah. ocean, mountains. You can't see this from the ground. With the drone, you just go up, and from the higher po uh, point of view, you get to see the whole area. Most most times than not, people are not just buying the home. They're buying into the area where they're going to live. Exactly. The neighborhood is just as important as the house. 100%. If you're going to have the best best luxury home in a crappy neighborhood, what is that going to do for you? You're going to be stuck at home all day. Exactly. So, like, drones are absolutely imperative now. Um uh, like we build drone pretty much in almost every single package if you're getting a package from us uh, both the photos and the videos the photo is great because uh, i mean photos are photos they're yeah. they're a necessity right and the video as we're going to get into more and deeper uh, talking about videos especially drone videos they're so epic you epic, can get man. so many shots like reveal shots where you're coming out you're just showing the house and all of a sudden you see an ocean in in the background you can do all these orbits to show the house, kind of like make it seem 3D. I uh, know. Um, you can go top down, showing the area of the lot, how big the lot is. Like in one glimpse, you see, you get the whole perspective of what it looks like. You can fly to all the neighboring, um, and we do this pretty much for every customer. I don't think other people do it. Uh, we fly our drones to capture like any nearby park, kind of by default, if you're getting a drone service. We don't charge extra for that as long as within the flight uh, flight radius uh, we can go capture the parks yeah the swimming pools whatever there is and all those things are just as important as the house speaking of photos coming into this company i i didn't know that 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 there was a thing called virtual twilight yeah. Uh, you know, I, I was pretty blown away by that like i've always thought when i would look into magazines like that right like that's a picture of uh like a virtual twilight that is you know right and so there. but i've always just thought that oh man the sky the sun the sunset is just crazy right now you know i just <laughs> thought it was just automatically like that but i've learned that no it's actually a technique to this thing you know right. so talk about a little bit about virtual twilight well it's very i think we were the ones that coined the word virtual twilight it was uh, something else people used to call it i started calling it virtual twilight i was in virtual tours so i thought virtual <laughs> twilight yeah yeah um the reason why they're important because like you're saying it makes a picture seem way more epic yeah it's like the opening shot should be i think a twilight picture but getting real twilights and i've been out there on the field is tough because you can arrive there and there's having a really really basic yeah sunset that doesn't look like anything or the house may be positioned in a, in a way where nothing's in the background it just depends how it's oriented against the sun um, or if you just have no view for various other reasons or sometimes too cloudy or not cloudy at all, it just has to be perfect conditions for you to get the best possible sunset. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's a lot easier now. Just we have a library that we've created over the years of like the most epic sunsets. We just drop them in and yeah. look supernatural. And not only that, the other problem is getting there in the evening is very tough as well for multiple reasons. Hmm. One is the photographer, it's like it's late for them. The, the usually like you can't really shoot anything before the sunset because it's already getting too dark. Oh, okay. So you have to wait around to go out in the evening to shoot some house. It's not convenient. You want to be with your family. It's especially in the summer, it's tough. In the winter, it's easy. Like you sunset around 4.30, 5 right, o'clock. Right. But in the in the summer, like when it's eight nine o'clock, nobody wants to work at those hours. So naturally, you have to charge more money right. for that. So it's more expensive. And the second part is to get everything ready for sunset is also kind of tough. You have to run around, make sure all the lights are on, and it's stressful for the seller as well. They're usually family time, you know, dinner time, 
and now they have to worry about getting somebody in there and making sure that it's it's done perfectly and you're like to have this very limited amount of time where you have to run around the house just to get the perfect shots because yeah. it's in the blink of an eye it's gone right. the twilight time so it's we've learned that it's better to just uh do our technique which is pretty amazing and we've built it over the years um, i don't think many people can do what we can do to make the twilight seem as real as it possibly can be even with daytime photos yeah saves customers a lot of time that doesn't mean that people shouldn't get real twilight shots uh either the real twilights have their time and place especially if the house has a lot of lighting okay that's only can be shown uh naturally without virtually editing um that doesn't mean we still won't replace the skies but at least the lighting the natural lighting some of the i've seen 20 30 million dollar houses where they go all out on lighting and yeah. you have to be there uh to to capture that mm. also city lights they're kind of really tough to uh, fake stuff like that where real twilight is very important also in video um because if you're already there shooting photos might as well shoot some video too yeah so that's where it's really beneficial i'd say if you're shooting uh if you have a house that's three four five six million dollars might as well get go for the real thing yeah but in all other cases like by default just get the virtual twilight it's cheap and it's it's like the first impression is the one that's the money shot gonna get a lot of eyeballs on the listing got it we've worked with a lot of agents realtors uh, i guess how crucial it is it for real estate professionals to create a personal brand and and what steps can they take to establish this this brand presence right i mean we're maybe it's online or things like that like how let's let's talk about that. how crucial is it to have that that personal brand very important um branding is everything and i've seen it done both ways i've seen people build a team yeah or they build themselves i think ultimately building a team is a better solution why because more scalable okay when you have more agents it's not about you personally you're the best no it's you're the, the process you created mm -hmm. is really good and you can add more people to that process kind of what we were doing mm -hmm. i always think teams are better when you have a collective it's always more powerful than the individual yeah it just has to be done right Mm -hmm. not like cookie cutter stuff or here you go like do it the best way you possibly can and then multiply that uh so the branding will really help you if you're doing like getting a quality logo if you have a good name not just uh, your personal name but a lot of the times i think within real estate personal name is also valuable but if you look at the biggest biggest guys some of them they they not only leveraging their own name they're creating like some kind of a company name that's very powerful like I said, getting good logo, getting a great website, mm -hmm. super important. Um, people will always check you out. That's the first pe first thing people do when you tell them who you are. They Google you and then they find your website. Typically, you want to have a good website where you rank number one for your own name at least. Mm. So then people get the right first impression. It's not like goes somewhere where it's not controlled. It's right. your controlled environment. Make it nice. Right. Make it sleek. And then also it's like the if people keep seeing you do quality work then that will help you build your brand ident identity never cut corners never even when when things are easy to sell for example like kevin hill uh, one of our great clients he just doesn't cut corners i've seen him like hey this house is gonna sell no matter what but he says uh, I don't want to be seen like I'm I'm doing just the basics. Yeah. You're still going to get a good package and stuff like that. Right, right. Um, and a lot of agents like that that work with us, they get it. I think the ones that come to us, they, they get these points. Yeah. We typically don't get the agents, don't, they, they don't understand. Once in a while, they do come. And everybody has to start somewhere. But most people that come to us, they find us because we're the best and they want to work with the best. And then they get way 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 better uh after they start working with us they get more jobs it's easier to secure new listings and uh, that's part of their brand identity right you have to I, when you say that you're working with the best vendors around you they know that you're not the ones shooting they know that you have to be with a photographer and if you tell them i found the best company out there like us yeah. we're the top rated out there and the, the, like i'm not bragging just google check who has the best rating yeah we're number one 
So if people say I'm working with 3D Media, that helps your brand go up as well. It's like a partnership between Rolex and Rolls Royce. Right. One brand props the other one up. Right, right. How um, how has the the digital landscape changed real estate marketing? You know, it's you know I feel like our like are there still a lot of people within the real estate world not utilizing the internet or has, would you say majority has kind of learned how to maneuver within a digital space now? Everybody utilizes, but not everybody optimizes. Like you cannot survive without internet and just that's impossible. Right. But um, I'd say still there's a huge opportunity. If you're a new agent watching, you have a huge opportunity. Don't give up. Just do the right thing by uh, following all the steps we kind of discussed, you know, make a good brand for yourself, get good photos of yourself, get a website, get a video, use all these tools that are available to you. You're going to stand out because a lot of people don't do it. Yeah. There's like this 80, 20 percent rule where only the 20 or sometimes 10, 90 where only a very select few are doing what they're supposed to be doing. Hmm. And a lot of the, the old generation, they're not doing much at all. They're kind of relying on their name now. They've built their reputation in the 80s, 90s, right, right. when that wasn't necessary. They already have their contact book. They're famous, so to speak. Right. They they kind of avoid that. But that's uh, I think they didn't adapt to the times. And I think some of these people that are relying on the past to support them, they eventually kind of get weeded out. Yeah. And these newcomers come in there and they crush it with the first year, they just crush it. Yeah. I've seen that over and over again. They just go come in strong, they invest a little bit of money and they crush it. Yeah. Yeah, they pay attention to the times. It's, it's so important, right? Just like, you know, like just the, the ever-changing social media landscape, right? It's, it's constantly changing. There's new platforms being developed right now that's going to be the new TikTok. That's going to be the new Instagram. That's going to be just that new, that 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 new platform, and uh, you know, and it's important to to be willing to adjust. Exactly, you know, right. and to go right be with the times. You got to be with the times. You, you're gonna have to switch it up. I when TikTok first came out, I was totally against. I'm like, man, I'm not getting on that crap. <sighs> you know what I mean? And I and and then I I saw people getting on and they were utilizing. People were smart. And they knew how to to utilize it and get on, and they were able to, you know, kind of 10x, 20x their their companies and their brands, you know, and uh, and so then after a long time, I said, okay, let me let me learn how to start using it, you know, and so my point for saying that is that you know we have to adjust. I think that's one of the one of the the biggest keys in business. Period. I think maybe you said that before. It's like learn how to adjust. Uh, just because time is going to change. Yeah, you got to, I, I, I think it's a, be ready to pivot anytime there's something new. Just um, that doesn't mean always chase things and switch things around. No, I, I think you need to become experts in certain things sure. before you jump to the next thing. But at the same time, just don't miss out on the opportunities. Yeah. And, and today there's like uh, the world is spinning faster and faster. And like the the biggest thing is the AI that's dramatically changing the world. Yeah. I don't want to deviate too much from this topic. I do want to cover AI. I think almost every video because <laughs> it fascinates me so much. Yeah, it's very fascinating. Um, there's AI now, like with creating images. I'm sure a lot of the things we do will I wouldn't say become obsolete, but will certainly become easier. And we're already starting to utilize them to bring savings to our customers, mm -hmm. especially with website development stuff like that. Um, but yeah, AI is something else. Like the world will change beyond what we can imagine in the next five to ten years. I completely agree. Can you imagine? I mean, think about five, ten years ago, right? We couldn't even imagine what we have today. Yeah. You know, like what the way that like five, ten years ago, AI was just a talk. It was just an idea. Well, yeah, it's coming. And you've seen it in the movies. Yeah, like, yeah. But now it's real. Now you talk to it. You, you you ask it to do things and does it. Yeah. Now the question is, when will it start to rebel, <laughs> or, <laughs> or when it will become like uh, superior than us and almost everything else? Like it's already superior in so many things. Yeah. Like I, it's I, the I best hope, artist. Uh, so I, yeah. I hope I hope it doesn't get to that point. Uh, yeah. yeah. But you're you're right though. Like you, 
it, it, it's it's the best of everything. The best art is it's like you don't even you just command it. You put in a couple prompts and it boom and boom and you got you have a masterpiece. Like yeah. I mean Mid Journey, right? We were yeah. we were looking at Mid Journey and like you know playing around with different images and you know architecture. It's crazy. And then it's so realistic. Yeah. You don't even a lot of times you can't even tell, right? You have you have to be you know, or like a, you have to look for it, but it's getting better and it's better. It's getting better, and people are people are advancing with it, and they're learning how to grow with it, yeah. so that it it gets better, right? I mean, there there are people that are so good that you can't even you just can't even tell. You know, soon I will be selling homes. I don't know uh, what to tell dang. you. Dang, <laughs> dang, that's next I, podcast is going to be interesting. Yeah, yeah. Let's let, I don't, let's. I don't want to spoil it, but. Uh, next podcast we're gonna try to dedicate to AI. Don't hold me to it, but <laughs> that's the goal. That's the plan. Definitely subscribe. Definitely follow us. We're gonna have a lot more exciting things to come. But let's get back yeah. to topic. Uh, we covered photos. Cover photos. We covered virtual tours to an extent, mm -hmm. um, and I think we didn't talk about video as much. Okay. So in video. The reason why video is so important today, it's uh, like, you know, it's emotional appeal, like I said earlier. And people have very short attention span. And almost everything out there is driven by video. All the social media is video related. All video. You're, you're on Facebook or Instagram or whatever it is, TikTok. You're scrolling through that feed and the feed is trying to see what you're going to stop to look at. Yeah. You're scrolling up. And the social media is, that's also, by the way, AI. It's watching you engage with the content because mm. its job is to deliver content that you're going to be interested in. Sure. It has a billions and trillions of stuff to show and it wants to know what will it show you because you have that limited attention span, you have limited time. What can it show you that you're going to be interested in? So moving pictures, statistically, there are some stats now that show have 400% higher success rate at cop capturing audience wow. than just straight up images. 400. Yeah, 400. Wow. And that makes sense because it's like you're scrolling and something moves on the screen. You want to stop for a second. Right. And the longer you stop, the longer the social media platform thinking basically this is important. Right. The longer it's – and there's a very complicated algorithm it will count – how long have you watched it versus how long the video is? The Are you going to engage with it by liking, sharing, etc.? But just that basic principle of stopping you, capturing your attention for as long as possible, Yeah, uh, that, that has a lot of value. So that's what video does. And having especially good music, it will be just, it goes from something that's static to something that's dynamic and mm. it speaks to your emotions. Yeah, And uh, we all know that emotions drive uh decisions yeah half the time 100 percent. that's why there's like all uh, Im Im impulse decision making people have all these aisles at the grocery store etc <laughs> based on just like impulsiveness oh yeah. let me buy this really quickly and yeah. the the advertising companies know really well and uh how to manipulate people yeah. into making certain purchase decisions and a lot of times um, music has a lot to do with it. that's why music plays in in stores yeah 100 yeah. percent so like to have a house and no music, it's a huge missed opportunity. Mm -hmm. And also like the part of the, the great part of about video, it's like, it depends who obviously shoots it, depends who edits it. Gotcha. You can't just find anybody because sometimes they can do more harm than good. Got it. If you have somebody that knows what they're doing and they're showing you just the right parts of the home and they're showing it in the best way possible, like that's magic right there yeah, you know you so can when, really influence somebody to at least give you their time but sure. i'm not saying that we should push something like on somebody else that they like if person doesn't need this house we're not going to convince you to buy it through a video our job is just to stop you give us more time to show you why this is good because mm. the attention is everything there's so much noise out there on the internet. It's, the video is the one that captures attention. And um, I like to kind of go from a video to a virtual tour. Mm -hmm. The next thing should be a virtual tour. Now that I got your attention, I got your emotions, now let me talk to your brain. Let me show you why this space is so good. Got it. And then the person can spin it, the whole house around, get the whole conceptual view of it. 
he sees the space, he sees the floor plan, he yep. walks through it, zooms in on every corner. Now it's like, oh, yeah, that's cognitive dissonance. Right. You're already uh, so attached to it, you're going to convince yourself that you need it. Yeah, now you can even, I mean, I think you showed me where you can measure, you can do measurements. You can do measurements. Yeah. Uh, let's say you buy the house, you can, that's again, going back to quality vendors. If you're using a quality vendor that's using the most expensive camera like we are, you can export architectural files. So a lot of the times people buy a home and they want to do some kind of remodeling on it. So if it has a virtual tour, you can contact us for the, those files and we can give them to your architect and boom, that just saves them so much time. Wow. They can redesign the whole space in that's a heartbeat. Happy. That's happy. Yeah. Instead of going there and measuring everything manually. And that's the thing that's uh, I think a lot of companies out there cheating. They're using like cheap $300 cameras to get uh, like the virtual tours, but yeah. you can do the measurements in those because they're not designed for that. Right. Our cameras have the sensors, infrared sensors or lighter sensors to measure the space perfectly. So then it's 99% accurate. A combination of things is very important to have photos, video, drone, 3D. We haven't touched on something else that's really important. Uh, first of all, landing page. That's another really useful service to have kind of like a property website for the house is super cool because mm -hmm. it's like a business card for that house. Got it. it puts all the assets in one place. Uh, we sometimes put a map on it as well, contact information for the agent. So it's it's like a digital flyer. I have the time when I go to open houses, yeah, I take a flyer, toss it afterwards. Yeah, Most people do that. Right. But if you take their phone number and say, let me text you the link to the house, they're gonna save that. It's gonna stay in their phone, first of all. And second, you just capture their phone number. Right. Uh -huh. So now you know the who the potential buyer is. So you have an extra contact in your phone book. Uh, so it serves that purpose as well. And you can keep, uh, you have analytics on those landing pages. So those are very important. And lastly, another extremely important service is uh, virtual, like staging. Okay. If, if you really need to save money, which I understand, people need to save money somewhere, right? I'm not saying cut corners, but save money. Be more frugal. Not everybody has a ton of money to invest. Save it on staging. Mm. That's the one thing you can save on. Because um, I think for, like now you can virtually stage even virtual tours. It's kind of still pricey, but uh, you can do that. You can virtual stage virtual, virtual tours. tours. Yeah. Ah. But at least the photos, easy. In fact, the virtual staging on photos is sometimes better than the real thing. Nice. It looks like 100% realistic. And we have amazing designers. They pick the right yeah, furniture. You show me a couple of them things. It's crazy. They're on our website. Check them out. And it's like one-tenth the cost of real staging. Yeah. So instead of spending like five, six thousand, spend a few hundred. Less than one-tenth in most cases. So basically what you're saying is that when you hire us, you're going to get beyond quality. I think that's what you're saying. I'm saying you're going to do the right thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. But I want to keep it about us. Like there are other people that do stuff as well. Yeah. Just be smart who you hire and be smart what you order. Yeah. Uh, my argument is order almost as much as you can possibly order. Hmm. And it seems like counterintuitive sometimes somebody that's starting out saying, oh, I don't have that much money, but that's what's going to make you money. That's the best return on investment you're going to have out of anything else you're going to spend your money on. Got it. Getting these assets because you can reuse them for every listing presentation you ever go to. That's true. You show what you do. That's true. Uh, you, you show that you do not cut corners. It's that reputation. It's uh, people value that. Just put yourself in the shoes of the person that's hiring you. Yeah. Who are you going to hire? They're going to interview three, four, five, six people. Who are you going to hire? The guy that does the basics or the guy that does everything? And also helps you negotiate higher commission too. Yeah. Like a lot of people miss the point. They try to lower the commission to get the listing. No. Convince your customer that let me do more for you where lowering commission is not required. If I can, you might save like a couple of thousand on lowering commission, but let me instead sell it for tens of thousands of dollars more. You don't even have to lower commission. You just get the right person for the job. Yeah. So like these services pay for themselves from the fact that the house will sell mo for more and you will get more commission as a result. That's basic. And the stats show that 
like just from virtual tour alone, the selling price goes up by 9%. Hmm. Now combine it with all the other services. Yeah. And why? Because one extra offer, an extra person that sees the house or likes it, increases the house by quite a, f quite a lot. So average is 9% higher selling price. So let's put that into perspective. I'm going back to the average commission for 1.2 million dollar house mm -hmm. should be around 36,000 if you're charging normal commission rate. So if it sells for 9% more and your commission is 36,000, 9% of 36,000 is roughly like 34, 3500 bucks. Mm -hmm. You just made 34, 3500 dollars for spending about a thousand dollars on a nice package that has everything. So you just tripled your money. Yeah. And you get to reuse it later. And you might win another listing that's 36,000. Right, right. And people often like ask, how do I get the luxury listings? This is how you get the luxury yeah. listings. Because you're a luxury person, you're doing the luxury things. Hmm. Like the, the I that like goes without saying, I don't think I've ever seen an agent that gets these luxury homes that cuts corners. They don't. Yeah. They get the best stuff. That's how you do it. And the ones that don't, they'll be weeded out immediately. If you're at a point where you've made a ton of money and you can sell a $50 million house, mm -hmm. you're pretty clever, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to pick the person that knows what they're doing when it comes to marketing because you Absolutely. probably have a business. Absolutely. You cannot be a, a person that owns a $50 million house and not have a business. Right. And any businessman knows without exception that media services are the ones that build that business. Advertising and media and exposure and digital marketing are all the reasons why he made $50 million in the first place to buy that house. Facts. Simple. Yeah. So do not cut corners. Please do not cut corners. Do yourself justice. Get If you're an agent that's just starting out or you're an agent that's been doing this for a while, please don't cut corners. You're, gonna, you're shooting yourself in the foot. You think that there's a, not a lot of listings. Yeah, but eventually there will be. And you want to be on top now. So when there's a ton of listings coming out, people know who you are and what you do. Don't do things that are easy. Do things that are right. And I'm not saying blow your money away on just about everything. Spend it wisely. And this is the best thing you can spend it on because it's relatively speaking inexpensive. Yeah. Even if you're making on the lowest end possible a ten thousand dollar commission, that's kind of a joke in today's market to make only ten thousand dollar commission on a sale of a home. But let's say that's the only thing you get ten thousand bucks. If you're gonna spend a thousand, that's still only ten percent. It's worth it. That's only ten percent of you gonna what what you're making. You have to give that for the benefit of your seller, for the benefit of yourself. Absolutely. Please don't be frugal. Like that's not even frugal. Don't be cheap. Don't be cheap. Yeah. Frugal is like I said, if you can save seven thousand dollars on on real staging, that's frugal. But saving a few hundred dollars on something that's going to make you tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, is just being stupid. <laughs> Simple. Simple. Boom. Well, I yeah. think I think that was the mic drop right there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what the mouth? Well, thank you. Thank you for sharing your expertise. Um, I've been taking a lot of mental notes here but it's just it's just good information period and i and i really believe that everybody that's taking the time to listen to this i believe they're going to get tremendous value from everything that was shared here uh you know and also too is it's giving it's giving people an opportunity to learn more about 3d media you know ultimately because everything that we talked about is what we do right we're not just talking about some uh some theory things or just some general topics these are things and these are services that we actually offer as well so if you are if you you heard anything in this episode that maybe got your attention and you are looking for these particular services contact us reach out reach out and we'll, and we'll take care of you 3dmedia.com and also drop comments in the in the video we'll we'll, we'll respond to every single comment and uh, i want to hear what you have to say yeah if you think if you disagree with any of the things i say or give us as let us know that's uh, we're we're out to seek the truth we're not out there to preach we're out there to seek the truth and if we're wrong explain to us why and uh, i'm i'm ready to admit that i'm wrong when i'm wrong but just to give you perspective 
I've been in this business for many years now. I've personally been involved in the sale through the media creation of probably over, I don't know, I lost count, from 10 to 100,000 homes, hmm. at least. And that's a lot of homes, more than probably any real estate agent out there, uh, even though it's not directly involved in the sale process, but indirectly, I've seen it all. And uh, you can easily verify this. We are the, one of the top companies in the, in the country doing this. I have a lot of insight for you that is very valuable. In fact, before we end the podcast, I want to zoom out a little bit and give you a perspective from, again, things that I've learned over the years that give me a unique perspective on the real estate market as a whole. Because it's I think there's a bigger picture to, to be seen outside of the media services. In general, I like where is the where do you think the the housing market is right now? Isn't it like crazy getting things are getting out of control? Yeah, it's getting crazy. The rents are getting out of control, yep. the prices are getting out of control. And I've heard many speculations that it will crash and then some people say especially the agents tend to say no it will never crash because in 2008 uh the homes like people didn't have equity now they have equity in the homes there were bad loans now we have good loans it will never crash but guess what just be pragmatic everything that goes up must come down we've been going up we had a small correction but not really big correction has happened yet mm -hmm. Uh, there is a, there is a very, why, why are the homes so expensive today? Because there's not too many of them on the market. Why are they not on the market? That's a bigger question. Why are people not listing their home for sale? Right. Multiple reasons. One is the interest rate is very high. When the interest rate is very, very high, the person that owns a house, he's not in a position to buy another one by like, he's going to sell his and he's like locked into a low interest rate and the new one is like double that amount mm -hmm. so he's kind of priced out to upgrade uh, that's reason number one the other reason is people are afraid to move for for whatever uh the, or, or some people are just trying to time the market perfectly they think he's going to keep going up and it's not time to sell uh but the thing is when when that mentality changes when people are ready to list, whether they drop the interest rates, some there's going to be a catalyst. And I predict it's going to be with the dropping interest rates probably about next year or the market is going to exhaust itself out because mm -hmm. it's not sustainable to be so expensive where nobody can afford a home. Like in Irvine, in the city we're located in, I think average income is like 80 in household income. No, it's about, let's say, $100,000 a year. Yeah. Average household income. Average price of a home in Irvine is like 1.4, 1.5 million. Right. Even if you spend all of your money on the mortgage, like it might not be enough with the current state of things. And what what about food? What about cars? What about insurance? What about anything else? Right. It's just not sustainable. There's a select few of, uh, of uh, people and investment companies that are able to gobble up inventory. But especially with investment companies, they're quick to, to sell it when they when they think it's time to sell. Mm -hmm. They're not out there like a homeowner that's gonna live through the house because his family's there. It's an investment for them. When they feel like it's time to cash out, they cash out. So they're gonna crash, hmm. crash the housing market. I think it's gonna be uh, like, I don't know. That's my prediction. I might be wrong. I think 2024, we're gonna see a big influx on the, uh, of inventory. Okay. And. Uh, if you've been saving up to buy a house, maybe it's uh, start think about uh, waiting until 2024, like hits probably middle of the year mm -hmm. when the interest rates will probably go down a little bit because you can't sustain the interest rates uh, so high for so long because something's going to give either the economy collapses and people can't afford to buy things anymore and naturally prices go down of homes included as well. Or the, the, the economy, the government is going to bring the interest rates down, allowing people to list homes for sale of, all of a sudden. Then the inventory that was supposed to be there for the last couple of years all of a sudden floods the market. Mm -hmm. There's going to be so many homes to choose, but not as many buyers anymore. And it's just it's going to tank things because people are going to be smart immediately. Oh, 
price are going down, I'm going to hold out now. Mm. Now it's my turn to hold out. It's going to be buyer's market. Got it. So that's kind of a, and, and I hope the, if the realtors are watching this, they prepare themselves for this, position yourself to have the right vendors like ourselves that mm -hmm. are going to hold your hand, going to give you the best services, economical. So you're out there capturing all those listings right away. And especially when the things are going to be sitting on the market for a very long time, you want to have those media services that become even more relevant because average time on market goes way down statistically when you're getting these services. Got it. Stats. Like, hold on. I'll give you the exact one. 26% less time on market was just getting a Matterport. Hmm. That doesn't mean good photos, video, drone. If you get all those things, probably 50% less time on market because you're exposing yourself. You're differentiating your listing from all the noise out there. You're going to sell while the other ones that are sleeping there on the market. Yeah, That's going to be even more relevant, even more important. Position yourself now. It's going to be a great opportunity. In every recession and every crash, there's opportunity for growth. So um, I hope people that are listening take advantage of, of this advice. And again, if I'm wrong, let me know. If you think the market's not going to crash, I really want to hear what you say. I think every all the evidence is pointing to it that we're going to be we're at a cliff right now. And a lot of people are just blind to see it. And that cliff doesn't mean that you need to fall and you can prepare and bungee jump. And with that bungee jump, get much higher where you were. You before. guys heard it first. You guys heard it first. So we'll, we will see. So we're going to keep tabs on these predictions here. And uh, and we'll, we'll see what the future holds. So we're approaching 2024 right now. So uh, so maybe we should uh, buckle our seats up and, and, and see where it goes. Yep. So so thank you. Thank you guys uh, for watching. Thank you, Dimitri, for sharing your expertise. And, uh, thank you for developing this topic so yeah, well absolutely. and delving into it and and bringing out all that information beautiful beautiful it, t it takes a team yeah it takes a team so don't forget to subscribe like comment share and all the above leave a comment and uh and, and we'll get back to you we want to hear from you we'll, we want to hear your voice but thank you so much for your support we appreciate it and we will see you on the next episode so please stay tuned we'll cover new topics we'll have different guests come on and it's going to be a very cool evolving podcast and i thank you for your time and we thank you for your time and hope you enjoy it and come back for more have a good night peace <laughs>